Any chefs in the grill? I'm pretty handy on the grill. Yeah, you like your meat charred and dry. Ah! He does make a killer barbecue. <sighs> We go save his ass. Is the album almost done? Yeah, it's killer. I watched the film a couple days ago, and as a big fan of, of your music and also of like Spinal Tap and stuff like that, I was totally into it. It was You fucking calling a spinal tap? No. <laughs> no, we do no. all the time, believe me. <laughs> um it was just, it had that like nice blend of like funny and campy and not so serious, but also like, like quite engaging. You were like, you were like into the story. Um, so I guess the first thing I was gonna ask is Dave, um, what was it like kind of taking this concept and now seeing it put all the way through to fruition to seeing it as like a, a film? Cause obviously that must be a very different process from recording an album. So how was that experience for you? Uh, well, unexpected. I mean, you know, the original idea was so basic and so lo-fi that when we went to the premiere the other night and saw it at Man's Chinese Theater on a big screen with the huge sound and the special effects, I mean, that was not something I ever imagined possible. So, um, no, it's amazing. I mean, you know, one of the things about this band is that if we have an idea that we all decide to pursue, we don't half ass it, you know? Mm -hmm. If we're gonna do a tour, we're gonna do it till the wheels fall off. If we're gonna make right. a record, we're not gonna leave the studio until we're completely, you know, happy with what we've done for the most part. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I think that because we, all work so well together that even the stupidest idea can become something like a full length feature film. Right, um, right. So, you know, I'm very proud of the accomplishment and I enjoy watching it too, just because <clears throat> it's uh, it's just fun, you know? What was it like to kind of see yourself on screen as these, like, cause you're playing characters of yourselves, right? So how what was that experience, Nate? If you want to take that one, you want to start. I go back and forth. Like it's fun to it's fun to watch, and I, I think it's it's great. But then there's it's also it can also get a little cringy. A little cringy. Yeah, it's like oh you're you're really trying to act there, buddy. I see this. I, <laughs> yeah. I see it. I, oh, I right. want to do over. <laughs> right, right. What was the the most kind of fun kill in the film for you, Dave? For me personally. I mean, you know, those kill scenes, they're, it's, they're not done quickly. It's <laughs> a long process of like, making sure the guy who's pumping the blood is ready and the cameras are set and everything. But, um, you know, the one that I was involved in the most was uh, Taylor's decapitation. And, um, which was his idea, lovely. by the way. Like over, the original idea, I think he was supposed to be like sort of crucified against this wall and like sticks thrown at him and he you know um he decided that that was a bit too much work it was inefficient he wanted an efficient death he was like just I fucking chop my head off with a symbol right. we'll be out of there like that <laughs> um but then i mean the and spoiler alert there's the scene where chris is killed. i have seen the movie yeah. okay good <laughs> okay. there's the scene where chris is killed um uh on the grill smashing yeah. his face on the grill smashing the grill on his back stabbing him like this this was the first scene where I got to shoot uh, myself as a murderer. And the kid comes up and I'm holding the bloody knife with this fucking like super spooky face. That was fun. It was at that when my face is splattered in blood. That was that was the point in uh, ma the making of the movie where I was like, ooh, <laughs> I'm the bad guy. Right, right. It did, it had a, if it wasn't you guys, I think it would have been like suburban dad rage that kind of like grill moment, right? That, it has that vibe. Beat um, someone to death with an IPA or the remote control. Yeah, exactly. You better cut the burger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was there a time where it you guys like broke character and like had the sillies and had to had to work through that? Or were you real like focused, dedicated, hardworking actors? What, what do you think? <laughs> you just keep your eyes on Pat during the, when you're watching it and you'll you can answer that question he's trying so hard not to laugh the entire time it's like right. an SL, snl right. skit yeah he's, he's trying not to break 
Yeah, yeah. If you could, when you're watching it back, are there any elements, you said there's the like cringy things that you're like, oh, but are there moments where you're like, oh, actually, I I, I really enjoy it. Like what, what kind of spoke to you through the silliness, I guess is the question. Nate, if you want to start that one. Uh, well, the the scenes that were the most fun to shoot when we're, or, or were the ones when we're all together. Mm. Like, you know, the, the song's not coming together, we're in the room kind of arguing, or uh, I really liked uh, after it would become apparent that something wasn't right with Dave mm. and the rest of the band's like together, like kind of strategizing how to deal with it. Just uh, those like scenes where we're all together, like acting, <laughs> those were the most fun. Well, right. the thing. I don't know, because I also, I also liked, I really liked the scenes with me and Pat when we're like down in the basement, kind of yeah. searching around. That's exactly for the book. what I was gonna say, man. Yeah, that was really fun. Pat and Nate are maybe <laughs> the greatest comedy duo since like, I, like Dumb and Dumber. Like it's so. For the Dumb and Dumber, that's a good bar. Good the bar. Two of you guys together, those that basement scene, like a crowbar. That that's some of the best parts of the movie because we're not confusing your fucking chemistry. You know, it's fucking yes. good yes. shit. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised by two of the cameos. Um, I, spoiler alert again, the, the Lionel Richie and then Jimmy Simpson at the end. What? That was great. Oh, yeah. What was, how did that come Well, about? here's the thing with Jim is that he was brought on to be our acting coach, right? So our first table read, which was like, what the fuck is a table read? We had no idea what that was. The first table read, uh, you know, everybody read through the script, producers, director was there, and Jim was there. And afterwards, he's like, hey, just so you know, I'm going to be here in case you guys have any questions, need any help with anything, just ask me and I can help you through this. And we were like, okay, dude, did you ever ask for help? He wasn't around. With no, I know, and then he book. bailed. Yeah. And then, you know, and then he's in the fucking, I guess he has a career of his own. Well, there's that. But I wish yeah. we could have like, you know, like lit up the bat signal or something like, Jimmy, right. help with the line. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so he was amazing. And yes, his scene is really great at the end, but he had a much more important role other than just the that last scene. Um, and then Lionel. I mean, yes, that was yeah. great. If you, you know, dreams do come true. Let's make a movie that has Carrie King from Slayer and Lionel Richie in the same fucking film. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs>